Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm the Bearded OG, and in this episode, we are going to get started with expanding our factory city here in preparation for uh, production line for assembly director systems, which is the first thing in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, sorry, upper right-hand corner, my other right, <laughs> um, for uh, phase four. And um, so, uh, let's see, where to begin? So, uh, I guess let's start with hard drives. Uh, I have a whole mess of hard drives. Um, you know, that we brought back from the last episode, and I should have one also uh, already ready to go, so let's grab another one. And I also, in the last one, I took the, uh, I took this alternate oscillator recipe, because it produces almost twice as many per minute, and it uses less quartz and rubber, which I'm just throwing into the sink at this point and AI limiters. And then I think I am, um, don't I have an alternate recipe for those two? Oh, I guess I don't. Okay, so those take copper sheeting and quick wire. Uh, so I took that one. Uh, whether or not we actually use it remains to be seen, but uh, let's see what we got here. Alternate pure aluminum ingot. Okay, that, That's good. Actually, that's really good because the normal recipe requires a foundry and coal or no, uh, foundry and silica. This only requires a smelter and no silica. That's really good. I don't know if, how the production rate compares, but we're getting that. Okay, let's get the next one going here. Yeah, let's look at that for a minute. Aluminum ingot. Okay, so this this produces only half the quantity, but here again, way easier to make. And um, also, a th one third of the aluminum scrap is needed to make it too. So it's a, I think it's a, a pretty damn good trade off, and we don't have to use silica. Hmm, yeah, okay. Might have to think about changing things up over there in our our what is still at this point anyways our temporary aluminum production we'll have to see about that okay cool yeah i think that was a good recipe i'll take it all right so um what we're gonna do first is we're gonna we're gonna make some changes to our mo here in terms of our our factory city Everything up to this point, you know, I've built on one meter foundations right directly on top of the water. And moving forward, I want to I want to get the floor up in the air so that we have uh, room underneath for logistics and, and, you know, transportation and things like that. Uh, and I also want to start utilizing the roads that I built. I, I think I don't know exactly how this is going to work because I've never really worked, you know, with, with trains and I've never gotten this far in this game before. So I'm still learning, you know, I'm still trying to figure the damn thing out. I'm having a hell of a fun time doing it though. Uh, but it, <laughs> you got, it, it's a lot of work, man. It's a lot of work playing this game in the, in the later game, you know, just trying to think things through and all that. Um, so anyway, all that to say, I want to use my new road system. I want, uh, I want to raise the factory floor up off of the water so we can utilize space underneath it and I also want to you know uh, utilize rail start using rails and trains and um, so to do that we're, we're gonna keep everything here exactly as it is I'm not gonna change anything at all and I'm going to assume at this point that most of the resources we're gonna need for the assembly directors and all the other stuff in the future are gonna have to come from new locations um, we do have some resources still available on the current lines and I might tap into them just kind of depending upon how things come together. I haven't even, you know, put in pen to paper yet in terms of figuring out the assembly director system. And, you know, I, I'm kind of trying to decide if I want to use the satisfactory calculator, the, you know, the online calculator for that or do it manually. Obviously, using the calculator is going to make it easier but, you know, as I'm learning stuff and, you know, I'm new to all of this, 
I learn it better if I do it myself, you know, if I figure it out myself. And sometimes that actually means, you know, getting a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil and, and actually sketching things out. Sometimes it means, you know, just getting an Excel spreadsheet out and working out the calculations. Um, and, you know, it's a lot more work to do it that way, but it's also helps me wrap my brain around it better. And it's a little more satisfactory <laughs> when it's all built and it all works right. Uh, and frustrating when it doesn't. So anyway, all that to say, I haven't figured that out yet. I, I, I will almost certainly use the satisfactory calculator when 1.0 comes out and we start over. But yeah, that's neither here nor there right now, though. Um, that's, that's coming down the road. So our goal for today is to just start changing things up in terms of our, you know, our foundations and our platforms and our and start using the roads and things like that. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, do I have my hover on? Yeah, okay. Let's get up in the air here. We're going to remove this little section here uh, because we're going to need to put our first road piece in. And actually, I want to put that back. We're going to now go to foundations and we're going to go to a one meter ramp and pop that in there. I mean, we need to do this in order to get all of the heights right for, for the new floor. I've already kind of, you know, I've already gone through and, and tested all this out. So that's why I know this is where we need to start and how high we need to go and that sort of thing. Okay, good. Now, we're going to come down here, go into our blueprints, and we're going to grab the incline catwalk sidewalk. And then we want to turn it this way. And... We need to slide it over to there. N uh, wait a second. No. I think we want to go... So that's one, two, three, four. Yeah, I think we need to go over one. And I might need to, in that case... Pick these up too. Yeah, this is what we need to do. Because things weren't quite coming together the way that I had done it in my test. And I'm going, okay, something's wrong here. Let's go back to blueprints, go to the incline. And we want to put this in here. I believe that is correct. Yeah, that's what we want. Okay. Now, what we can do here is grab a rail. And stick those in right there, like so. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to get to uh, change these to uh, asphalt, like so. And we're going to get rid of a couple of th things here. Let's get rid of those. And whoops. Let's get rid of those and those. And those. It's kind of bugging my eyes out looking down here because of all the light reflecting through the thingies above. All right, now what we want to do is we want to go to here and we want to do a right arrow that way. And also that way. And then we want to change this to a left arrow that way and this way to direct the flow of traffic. Now. In hindsight, or maybe what I should say is in the future, when I when I start to lay out foundations, you know, for a city or for a factory or whatever, 
I'm going to make sure that I always do that with, you know, four, four tiles uh, instead of, well, essentially two tiles here. Um, so I'm not going to change this road. It's going to stay, you know, the way that it is because it's too late to change that. Well, it's not too late, but I don't want to go to all the trouble to do it. But just moving forward, uh, now that I, you know, know that this is what we'll be using for roads in terms of blueprints and whatnot, we'll just always going to make sure we have four foundations of space for roadways. But for now, we just have to, you know, we just have to work with what the way things currently are. Okay. I think what we'll do here is go back to side dotted line and we'll add that back in like that. The other thing too is I'm not really technically planning on using uh, this road anyway. Uh, at least I don't think we will. We'll, ha we'll see. What's in my head is that, you know, we'll bring, we'll bring resources in via rail, but then we'll use, probably use trucks to transport those resources to the actual factories. I think. <laughs> we'll just have to see how it comes together. All right, we have another uh, hard drive that came in, so let's go take a quick look at that. Okay, alternate heavy flexible frame. That one takes rubber. Alternate pure copper ingot, 37 and a half per minute. So the default recipe on this, I think takes steel beams. Does it? I don't know. Here, let me look it up real quick. No, it takes steel pipe and gives us two per minute. This one takes rubber instead of pipe, but it takes less encased industrial beams, slightly more screws, which isn't a big deal, and gives us 3.75 per minute. I think that's a pretty good recipe, actually. Yeah. Uh kind of like that one. I think we'll take it. Beautiful. I guess I should, since we're going to get a little further and further away here, uh, let's just carry some hard drives with us so we can keep popping them in as we go. Carry, we'll take them all with us. Get the next one going here. Back to this. I wonder, too, if we... Uh, no, I'm going to leave that the way it is. I'm not going to mess with it. Let's go to our blueprints. We'll get the incline catwalk. And as long as that arrow is, is in the center, that should be correct. These are very easy to put down when you're going up, but they're a pain in the ass to put down when you're going down. I think I demonstrated that um, in an earlier episode, Incline Catwalk. And we're going to go up four, and that gets us to the height that the new floor is going to be. Okay. Now, when we do this... Um, I might need to change the blueprint so it doesn't have that light there. Yeah, I think I, I think I do need to do that. The downside to that, of course, is we'll have to cable everything, but, um, we, you know, it doesn't make sense to have double lights there. And that being the case, we probably should do that on um, the other roads too. But I don't want to spend a ton of time 
on that, but we will correct things as we go. So let's go to roads and rails, incline cat sidewalk. And it's this one here that we want to remove. Okay. Interesting how, you know, you design something like this, but you don't always see all of the, you know, iterations of things until you actually start working with it for realsies. All right, so you... I guess it just makes sense to power you on there. Oh, you know what else I didn't do? I need, I should have set these to night mode in the blueprint. So I'm going to do that too. Case in point though, right? Another thing that I just didn't think about until I started uh, working with them. Nope, I hit the wrong button there. Alright, let's do this again real quick. Put that down. I'm gonna need to do that for the other ones too, but again, we'll we'll just fix them as we go. I'm not gonna sit here and try and fix them all right now. Okay, incline. We want you to be... Oh, okay. Never mind. We'll have to do it this way. Copy settings. And night mode. Good. Okay. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to put in a cross section. And I might... I'm probably... Not going to be able to do that from here, but we'll see if it lets me cross intersection. Yeah, see, the problem is when I try and set this down, it wants to go up a tile. And we can't... How far out can I get before I lose connection? Right about there. When I start over on 1.0, I'm probably going to use a couple of quality, quality of life mods... I didn't really want to use mods for my first playthrough as I, you know, learn in the game and stuff. Uh, one of them will be vertical nudging and hopefully increasing the nudging spaces. I don't know if that exists right now. I know, I know vertical nudging exists. I just don't know if it increases the spaces. And also, you know, the one that lets you daisy chain connections on machines. It just don't, doesn't make sense to me that we could, shouldn't be able to do that. And maybe, you know, a few other other ones too. Anyway, I'm digressing here. Let's get, what do we want? We want the cross intersection. Yeah, okay. So if we aim that right there, it should be correct. Now we're going to run the road um, east and west along here. And then this, this little space here is just going to stay the way it is stay open and you know it'll we we can use it if we want to for logistics later on okay so now what we need to do is i have a, another blueprint here called road section flat right uh, because all of this area out here we're gonna oh shit uh, we're gonna fill in right it's gonna be our new floor so we don't need the catwalks on that side. We just need it on the sides that are exposed. Why don't we get some power going on these lights just so I can actually hover here. That's already connected. Um, one challenge we might have with this, though, is, um, I might need to, oh, no, we'll be okay. 
Yeah, we'll be fine. All right. Let me get the rest of these connected then. For this side, how do we want to actually handle that? I mean, I, you know, I can run the power from down there, but I'm just thinking for down the road. What we could do is Let's try and let's try this. Let's connect a an outlet right there. So let me make the right connection. Uh, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll connect that to there. And then we'll bring you to, yeah, we're going to have to put it here, otherwise it'll clip up through the road. It's not very safe though, because people could be, oh shit, <laughs> speaking of which, <laughs> uh, walking by there and get zapped, huh? Um, can I put these underneath on here? No, nah, see, it's not going to let me do that. You doity rant. All right. So what if we then, in that case, let's just grab a flat piece. There we go. And we'll put this... There. Trying to get it to do what I wanted it to do. And then this one here can go away. Yeah, we'll just have to assume that's conduited. Conduited? Okay, so that takes care of that. And obviously... I wouldn't be messing with hooking up the lights right now, but I'm not hooking them up for the sake of the lights. I'm hooking them up so I have something to hover from. And we have to do it anyways, right? So I might as well just do it now. Okay, good. Let's see what we have here. Okay, ultimate... Adhered iron plate. That's 3.75 per minute. Alternate charcoal. Nah. That's an early game thing. It's useful in the very early game when you're still, you know, gathering wood and stuff by hand. Uh, or an alternate silicon high speed connector. This does three per minute. Okay, I need to I need to check that one. It uses quick wire, silica, and two circuit boards. Okay, so the default recipe gives us 3.75 per minute and requires one circuit board, less quick wire, and cable. Yeah, I, I think this sucks because it requires twice as many circuit boards, more quick wire, and substitutes silica for cable, but neither one of those things are a big deal. They're both, you know, second tier products that you have to make from raw material. Actually, well, I guess cable's a third tier product. But I, still, I mean, cable's just not a big deal. So, yeah, I don't I don't like this recipe. I think it kind of sucks. We're not going to take it. So that means, I guess I should look at this. That uses rubber for 3.75 per minute. Say so default recipe uses screws and plates for five per minute so this this one here uses only half the plates and one thing of rubber but only produces 
And I've got, I already have a alternate recipe to turn. I have actually two or three alternate recipes for screws. One of them will turn steel directly into screws or steel beams for a huge quantity. But I think I have another one that makes it a tier two recipe. The screws, right? Um, yeah, cast screw. I have that recipe. So I, yeah, I don't think, uh, I don't think that's really be, uh, benefiting us at all. So, yep, I don't like any of these recipes. We're going to re-roll them. Back to this. We got the lights hooked up. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to blueprints, and we're going to go to road section flat right. And, all oh right, here, here again, I'm going to have to get out here. Um, it's about, whoops, about as far out as I can go. Hopefully this will be enough. And, and we need to flip this around. No, actually, we did have it correct. I think that's where we want it. Uh, except for we got to nudge it over that way. Good. And then here, we want to grab the catwalk and just that rail and remove it. And that's all we got to do with that. Also, I think because this is a corner, we'll put a light... on the corner and run a cable to it. Oh, you're not going to let me do another connection to you, are you? Yeah, see, that's why we need that daisy chain thing. So what we'll do in this case then is run this to right in that corner. There we go. Okay, here's another one I need to change to night mode in the blueprint. And this one we just have to do manually because we already set it up. Uh, I guess we'll put it down here. This was road section flat right. Change that to night mode. Okay. Looking good. Now we're also, it's my intention also to, you know, build out there too. So we basically want to do the same exact thing then. So we'll grab the right flat section, come out here, make sure the catwalk's on that side and lock that in place. And look at that. We got it right the first time. How about that? Okay, uh, remove the catwalk and the railing. On this side, because we're going to have platform on both sides or foundations on both sides, um, I, th I think I made a blueprint for that. Let's like take a look. That should be, yeah, road section, flat city. It's got the road barriers, but it doesn't have the catwalks on it. Um, okay. 
Let's get out here. Oh, shite. Okay. It's just right on the very borderline of what we can do. Yeah. So let's let's get more street lights here for the power. I want you right there and one right here. Make sure we're connecting to you. Oh, well, we're going to have the same problem here too, right? Because it will only allow two connections. <sighs> That's such bullshit. Alright, let's go down underneath. We'll run off of here. And I believe that's the corner of... Well, I don't want to do that, though, actually. Try that again. Grab that line. Run to here. So we're nice and straight. And then we're also going to want to put one in this corner. You know what? I think what we're going to do here is take that back down. Let's put you in this corner. That's the main line coming. Yeah, that's the main line coming from here. So we'll leave that. There, that's better. I'd like to have clean wiring whenever possible. Now we can run this one over to here. And I think I'll just loop these in, because why the hell not, right? Once we get, you know, past this intersection, then then we should be able to just daisy chain them without any issue. It's just right here we it's a little trickier. Oh, okay, so those are actually hold on a sec. Right, those are actually all the way out of the corners. Right here. We don't need this one at all. There we go. Put those into night mode. Yeah. Again, just kind of weird stuff that it's kind of difficult, at least for me, to anticipate until we we actually do it. Okay, now we can come out to about here, which should be enough room. We'll go back into blueprints. We will get the city section and just move it over to there, and that should be where we want it, right? Let's just double check. That looks great. And then, now we can just daisy chain. Oh, that one, we don't actually want that light there. Right, I need to fix that too, don't I? Um, on this piece. Um, all right, so let's see. That's coming up to there. 
I think I want to actually flip this around. But let's fix the... Well, and actually I need to put it in place first to look at it. Okay, city section. Yeah, that's, that's the way I want it. Just because it keeps the same pattern. So on the right-hand side, the light's in the middle. And on the right-hand side, the light's in the middle. So that means on this blueprint here, we need to remove... Well, it probably doesn't... Uh, yeah, it does matter. We need to remove the light on the left hand corner I, I got to make sure I have the orientation correct as a thing so okay so load blueprint city section flat So that's the center light. So this one needs to go. And we want to set both of these to uh, night mode. There we go. Save the blueprint. Don't want to think I'm just going to leave the bl blueprint designer down there. Okay, so that shows us now where the roads are going to run um, out that way, out that way, and out that way. And I, before I started the episode, I, I ran a, a power line all you know as far out as the power line goes. And so I think what we'll do is we'll, um, well, I don't know. I. I might set up the the new floor all the way over to there or you know I just figured we'll go at least that far and then we'll you know see where we are that's a hell of a lot of concrete though maybe we'll go about halfway so the next part of this then is I think what we'll do is we'll set up our director assembly line in this area over here. And that being the case, what we'll do then is we'll set up the platform over here. Alright, we're going to have another situation here where we can't This has to, this has to go here. We can't run a line directly to this light. So that means we're going to have to get underneath there. Uh, no, that's not what I want. And then we'll just connect you into here. There we go. Wait a minute. Oh, I set this down before I changed. No, it's nighttime. <laughs> Night mode's on because it's nighttime. Duh. <laughs> okay. Good. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and start laying out some roads. Um, we want road section flat right. I guess I should call that maybe side because... Well, actually, hold on. Let's look at something here. We want to... Let's put this down. Yep. 
Yeah, that's correct. Why don't I... Hold on. Why don't I have any lights on that, though? On that side? We should have a light on the right-hand corner of this. One, uh, one, two, three, four. There should be a light right here. And then we're going to do, need to do the same thing here. Run that to there. Um, wait, did I not power that? I didn't. Okay. I was going to say. All right, here, let's just do this. I want to go here, here, here. Load blueprint. Road section flat right. Should probably just change that to side, maybe. Alright, we want to put a light in here. Partially overlapping. Oh. Right, it won't let me put it all the way in the end, so I'll have to put it right here. And then uh, configure that for night operation. That should be good. I'm going to change this to side because that's more accurate. I just called it right the first time because I, it was the right-hand side that kept the catwalk. But, uh, yeah, okay, so save that blueprint. We're good to go. Get rid of that. Let's go to here. Let's go edit. Which one? This is the right one. Okay, so let's just remove that blueprint. Apply changes. So we want the side blueprint. And we want to make sure that the single light is on this side. And I don't have need power over to here. it this way. Okay, guys, so I'm going to cut the camera here, and I'm just going to run the road at least to the, you know, to the end of our current area. And I might even take it further down, because then what we'll do, once we get all the way to the end just before those conveyor belts then we then we'll put a T intersection so that way we can go you know both directions um, so I think I'll build it down to there and then when that's done I'll bring you guys back and then we'll do the next part okay guys um, we are about to the end here um, why don't we why don't we go ahead and put one more piece in? 
So we'll pop that right there and then nudge it that way. We'll see if we have enough clearance from here. I think, yeah, we should. In fact, this is just about right. Now here we're going to want to put in a T intersection. Um, and this one I think I'm probably going to have to update to. Oh, no, actually, no, I guess it doesn't have any lights on it, so it should be fine the way it is. Just need to move it over to there. All right, good. Now, how much space do we still have over here? Yeah, I like that. That works. That works for me. What we'll do here is we'll run a light to the corner and one to this corner. Now, I'm probably not going to build anything in this section. I'll probably just leave it open. So because of that, we need to go back then to our normal uh, flat pieces, which, uh, yeah, should be this one. And I'm probably going to have to update the blueprint on this as well. Right. We don't want... Well, here, let's try it. Let's try it like this. Whoops. Now that should actually be good for the lights. If we do the same thing on this side, Uh, making sure that the centerpiece yeah that works actually pretty good We're going to have to get power to that side of the road. And um, these also need to be set to night mode, which I do need to change in the blueprint. Okay, good. Now, to get power across, we could just make a connection from this power pole here. If we did that... Our lights uh, right here so we would want to let's, let's come to there and then to here right all right let's break that connection Oh, fuck. That's not what I meant to do. <laughs> I was in blueprint mode. Can I set this down somewhere? I guess we can set it down there. 
It's in the water. That's weird. Let's load up the road section flat. You know, the thing is, though, now that I think about it. No, this is fine. When we're laying them down, we'll just have to alternate them is all. That's not a big deal to do. Okay. Save. Can I get some power here? Yeah, we can. Okay. Road section flat. And we want it... to go there, like so. Okay, so the way we're going to have to do this then is connect that one to there and then we have to run another one over to here. Oh, right, that one's not right on the thingy. Because the blueprint designer won't let us put it right in the corner. Oh, wait a second. We might need to do a half nudge. Yeah, I think we didn't need to. Okay, so we hold control. Oh, that doesn't work for this. Weird, man. Okay, whatever. That's the way it is. That's the way that it is. Hmm. Okay. I mean, I could manually move the light over, I suppose. We have the same thing going on here, too. Yeah, why don't we do that? Because this is an intersection anyways. We wouldn't have to worry about that when we're just laying down a long chain of these things. But for here, let's put it right on the seam. Okay, you can go there, you can go there. that on night mode and put this on night mode there we go I think we're good all right I'm not gonna run this road uh, north and south any further at this point I just wanted to mostly get it there so we kind of knew the extent of you know how we're gonna build the floor out And two, what I might do, just just for the hell of it, is let's put in the barriers there so nobody goes barreling off the side. Because that wouldn't be good. Oh, wait, no, that's not what I want. I want you. Oh, I don't want that either. What the hell do I want? I want... Oh, so that's using the secondary color for the... for the things. Alright, let's... I guess we could... Well, let's just do this one. Load preset. Caution yellow. Select color. There. That might actually look better. <sighs> Fix it primary. Let's go fuel yellow. 
Yeah, I like that better. And we'll do the same thing over here, too. We have to change it, uh, the pattern. And also to be fully OSHA compliant here, we'll put in some rails there and we'll put some top rails over the barrier just as an extra thingy. Purely for aesthetics, but then again, a lot of the stuff we do is purely for aesthetics. Aesthetics are important in this game. Uh, at least they are to me. Okay, so we'll put you there. Oh, that colors you red. Um, no, I don't like that. There we go. Do the same thing over here. I want that to be turned around that way. Beautiful. Now, um... I'm not going to put supports under this road because it's basically going to be attached to our floor, which will have supports. If that wasn't the case, if this was just a free standing road, you know, then I would be using, um, where is it at? A uh, road with support. I've been using these like every 12 tiles or so, uh, but not necessary for, for here. We're making progress. Let's head on back to over here. How am I doing on concrete? Yeah, we got a lot of concrete yet. Uh, start for this next part though. It's really going to start uh, using that up. I'm trying to decide if I want to run this road over. Um, I don't know yet, so let's just do this for now, but I'm not going to do all that other stuff because I might end up actually increasing that road. We have another hard drive to look at. Alternate heavy oil residue, flexible framework. That produces seven and a half per minute. The thing is, is do we need to still make those for anything? Um, that does 60 canisters per minute, but I just use, typically use just plastic to make those. I don't really see the point in using the main product to create what is normally its byproduct. Other than maybe it's just a, a much better production rate, perhaps. But I mean, you know, th this resin shit, <laughs> I've got it coming out my ears. It's not like I have a shortage of that. So yeah, I don't know. Um, this does 60 per minute. I think the default recipe that uses plastic does 20 per minute. So that's pretty good. You know, if you needed lar you know, larger quantities of these, which I don't, at least not at this point. I am curious, though, if the these frames are, you know, if we're going to need to make those for something. Versatile frames. Let me take a quick look at that. The default recipe for versatile frames is five per minute. Take steel beams and modular frames. 
This one is seven and a half per minute. Takes only half the steel beams that the default recipe, but also adds eight rubber to the mix. Okay, so we we are gonna need these. We're gonna need them for the magnetic field generator, which is one of the the phase project parts. So the question then is, do I want to use less steel, add rubber to the mix to make 50% more? I don't know. I'm, I'm on the fence on that one, to be honest with you. Um, I think we're going to, I think I'm going to re-roll. Yeah, let's just re-roll. Okay, so um, the road's going to need to be run out that way. But let me show you the next part of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into blueprints and we're going to go to foundations and walls. We're going to grab our 4x4 four four, uh, connection and... Let's put the get the first one in place. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get underneath this and I have um, this under platform support that I made. And we just uh, let's put that in blueprint mode and then it'll snap it right to the center. And um, so, yeah, basically, these are the supports then that we'll use for the floor. Now, I told you guys this many, many episodes ago. And the way that I justify doing this from a physics standpoint in my in my brain is, you know, this is a futuristic sci-fi game, right? So I, I just assume that these pads here are some kind of anti-gravity pad that can rest on water and provide support. <laughs> Because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna run the pillars all the way down to the bottom of the sea. I mean, you kind of can do that, but that's just ridiculous. Um, so yeah, this is what we're gonna go with. Now I'm gonna set these supports up every third piece. All right, so let's go back to here, and we'll grab this, and we're in blueprint mode. So there's one, two, three. And then we switch to our under platform support and pop that in place. That will be the spacing of these. Let's also do one out to the south as well. One, I'm gonna run out of power here. Two, Three. So, because I don't have power out here, I mean, I, I know I can run, and I will run the road down here, but when we get way out to there, we're not going to have power. So, we're going to have to use our jetpack to uh, do this part. Make sure that's on biofuel. Okay, let's get the blueprint out first. And, you know, because this will snap pretty easily, I don't have need, you know, precise positioning there. So this one has a pillar underneath it. So then what we're going to do is go to here and we'll go one, two, three, and that should be lined up with you. I shouldn't have canceled the blueprint. There we go. And then we just go back to here and fill it in. There 
There we go. That was our first section. All right. Okay, guys. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> what I'm going to do next is I'm going to run this road down to the power line down there and set up the floor. We might... Hmm. See, the thing is, I don't want to, I don't want to set too much of this up quite yet. I might just go, uh, stop here in terms of going south, but we'll also build to the east, um, all the way to the end as well. And we'll start with that. And then, you know, obviously we can always expand it as needed. But I think that's going to be it for this episode. So uh, I'm going to start working next on beginning of the designing of our assembly directors. And I think the way that I'm going to handle that is I'm not going to try and design the whole entire thing off camera. I think I'm going to do it kind of in stages and then show you that stage and then design a little more. Excuse me. And then show you that. And then, you know, and so on and so forth. Just because this is going to take a long time. You know, th this is way bigger than anything we've tackled so far. And uh, so, you know, we, we need to kind of eat the elephant, you know, one bite at a time with it. And, um, yeah, so I think that's going to be the plan. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share out the video, and we'll catch you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.